I just want to give everyone another welcome and another greeting and, uh, and have uh, give you our thanks for participating in today's live webinar. We are entitled today's event, Powering Next-Gen Apps with Data. It's being presented by Looker and Bytecode AIO. Uh, today, we're going to share some details on how Essential is delivering actual insights with their Edge product using Looker Embedded Analytics. And then uh, I do have the pleasure of introducing today's speakers. First off, we're going to hear from John Marshall. He's the uh, VP of Services with Bytecode IO, and he's going to also cover today's agenda. He'll also then introduce Scott Smith, Director of Product Management of Edge by Essential, who is joining us to highlight their story, and we're thrilled to have him join us here today. Lucas Felosian is our VP of Professional Services for Looker, and he'll take us home with the end of today's presentation. Um, and we also, again, want to appreciate you all uh, for joining us here to hear from our panel of data experts. John, if you're there and uh, all set up, I will go ahead and turn the presentation over to you, and you can talk a little bit about uh, today's agenda. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so we're going to start today uh, with Scott taking us through kind of the, the market opportunity that they saw and, and ultimately the, the journey they went on to launch Market Share 2.0, um, wrapping up with a demo of the actual product and kind of how they think about delivering insights and data to their customers. Then I'll pick it up from there to talk a little bit about how here at Bytecode.io, how we partner with uh, customers like Edge by Essential to build products. And then Lucas is going to wrap up with kind of how he thinks about the market and how Looker is addressing some of these opportunities and helping customers be successful. And then we'll wrap up finally with a little Q&A. So with that, let me hand it to Scott. Thanks, John. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Scott Smith, and uh, I'm product director or product owner for Market Share. I'm excited to kind of talk about uh, not only our product, which I'm really passionate about, but also kind of our partnership with both uh, Looker and Bytecode and how they've really helped us get market share uh, to the market more quickly. And as we have these great ideas around new data or new reports, how they are helping us uh, to speed to market. So with that being said, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I have over 20 uh, years uh, experience in product management. I've been with Edge now a little bit uh, longer than a year, um, and I'm based out of Salt Lake City, Utah. And so Edge is, is part of Essential, and Essential here is really kind of a – it's a data or information company that owns a lot of different brands, and we really kind of focus on three major things, uh, consumer insights, marketing, and sales. And you've probably uh, heard of one or many of these brands uh, as you're looking at this. I happen to work on the edge side. So diving down a little bit more on the edge is that we have uh, brands within edge as well. And, and our brands are really kind of targeted towards doing three different things. We define, we demystify, and we deliver. And so from that uh, perspective, you can look at uh, we've, we're focused on e-commerce. We provide retail insights. We have a digital shelf product that helps you uh, optimize uh, your products on the pages that you sell them on from an e-commerce standpoint. And then there's the market sh share side that I sit on. So we do have some of the biggest brands uh, throughout the world. Um, you can see them here. It's really exciting as a lot of these large enterprises, uh, as they expand uh, how they think about e-commerce, how we can help them work with them um, to help them make better decisions and how ultimately to help them sell more. So let's talk a little bit more about market share. So market share uh, right now is an Amazon only product. And from Amazon, I'm sure we all have, uh, you know, we could spend the whole entire time talking about uh, different Amazon experiences that we had. I've been in uh, some webinars where we uh, have discussed during this COVID time, like, what's the weirdest thing you've bought on Amazon? And we are able to actually track that. And so as you start looking at Amazon, it's, uh, you know, 66 percent of uh, people start their product searches on Amazon, not not uh, Google. 
And, and then they go ahead and, and look at different things. But Amazon is just that core here in the U.S. You can see how many products they have and how many countries it's in. So market share uh, right now, again, we focus on the Amazon marketplace. You know, COVID is such an interesting time, and and uh, we pulled this survey uh, together to to look at how is COVID impacting your online experience or, or your uh, you know what you what you want to do, how you shop, how you interact uh, with the things that you need to buy, and you can see here that uh, generally one in four of us are shopping more online now uh, through COVID. And it's such an interesting time as we see uh, and talk to our clients of the impact that COVID is having. And you can see that not only from a, from a manufacturer who sells the products, but also us a consumer, how we're changing our behaviors. And market share is really kind of targeted to being able to measure that and help uh, those people selling on Amazon to optimize that experience. So as you start thinking about Amazon and, you know, how is Amazon different from retailers? It's really about the relationship that with kind of your common uh, brick and mortar, it, it was more about the relationship of, with an account manager where they can set the price and, and the promotions and different things like that. And you had that relationship and you managed it and, and uh, you'd go to dinner and different things like that. And that's how it used to work. With Amazon, the relationship is really with the data, that Amazon is a data platform, and you have to be able to understand the data and take advantage of the data and understand how Amazon works so you can maximize your opportunities or minimize your threats on Amazon. As you know, you saw in the previous slide, 350 million products. How do you get people to your pages to buy your products when there's so many out there and all of your competitors are out there. So it's that understanding the relationship with data that we help our clients with. And so as you start understanding the data, really you have to start asking some very kind of significant questions. And let me just pick out a, a couple that our clients are asking us and why they use market share. One, do you know your competitor's performance? And maybe the, the second one is, do you know your category growth and size? And, you know, as we uh, look into that, here's a very common use case that we see. That if you look at your sales in a vacuum, you might say, oh, man, I am so excited. Look at my sales increasing, right? 10, 20 percent, whatever they're increasing in at Amazon. The problem is that without looking at the category and the share that you have within that category, while your sales are increasing, your share within that category might actually be decreasing, meaning that your competitors are actually, their sales growth is more than yours, even though you may be thrilled with what yours are. So that's kind of those insights that you need and that complete picture that market share helps uh, to provide. Let me skip that over and, and um, you know, as we start looking at this uh, from a defining uh, standpoint, it's really kind of decoded when you start looking at that define, uh, demystify, and deliver. So Edge by Essential, some of the differences here, uh, we are Amazon experts. We have dedicated insight managers. Uh, accuracy is critical, not only about your own sales, but also your competitors, uh, as I just talked about, understanding what's happening in your category. Um, and again, it's that data, getting the data, understanding that data. So from a process standpoint, uh, and then I'll get into the demo, is, is that when we talk about data, Amazon provides some data. And, and we go ahead and, and pull that data on behalf of our clients. And, and we get a training set through our algorithms. We also go out and crawl uh, product pages to understand what's happening actual actually on the Amazon pages themselves and gather a bunch of information as Amazon is constantly updating those product pages, whether it be price, re ratings and reviews that are coming through, we're gathering all that information. We put it into our algorithms and then we spit out uh, what I'm gonna show you now is our dashboard uh, where you see data and, and uh, you're able to make decisions based off of that. So with that being said, let me share my screen.
So this is, uh, you're looking at market share. And, and let me give you a little, uh, just a, a history of how uh, this came about and, and how we got involved with Looker and Bytecode. That we had had our, our previous 1.0 version out in the market for, for quite a while. And historically, that version was really kind of targeted towards analysts, very data driven, a lot of uh, uh, details, a lot of tables, big tables on the screens that our, our clients loved and, and were using. But as we started to imagine Market Share 2.0, we wanted to make our data available to a broader audience. That the analysts were great, but that managers, executives, directors, uh, C-suite uh, people had similar questions. They wanted to understand their Amazon business as well. So we really wanted to broaden the personas uh, that we uh, that we were targeting. And so what we did from a strategic standpoint is we started to think and, and we built this based off of we wanted to up-level the data to, to provide some very high-level guidelines. Uh, of how your business is doing and what's happening. And then we wanted to allow users to drill down and drill down and drill down to get more and more granular data that they wanted to see. And our strategy generally is that what we want is where we are from a product is we want to show you what happened, right? And that's kind of the first step across any kind of analytics product that you're looking at. The second part is we want to show our, our users and our clients the why it happened. The next step is we want to be able to say, well, what, can, what actions can you take to change the why? Like if my sales went down, we wanted to tell you why they went down and what do we suggest for you to do to make them go back up? And the final step in this kind of journey um, is we want to be able to predict what is going to happen through our algorithm. So you don't have to wait that my sales didn't, went down. Let's look at your data and your historical and everything else that's happening. And we want to be able to predict, hey, it looks like based off of all these other factors that you might be start to see a decrease in your sales. Now you should go do this. So as we start looking at the data and our information, um, that's kind of our, our strategic view as we started looking at 2.0. So what we started looking at is that we needed two core uh, reports that our clients were used to and, and that we wanted to customize. And that was about sales and share. We talked a little bit about sales and the importance of share. I'll walk through that. But we wanted to own that ourselves because our clients were so used to it and we wanted to be able to customize it, tweak it exactly like we wanted to. But as we started thinking and we wanted to get out into the market quickly, we thought, wow, if we wanna start be able to uh, drill down and show additional data and drill downs, that that would take us a long time. And so that's where we started to engage with Looker and Bytecode to where they really helped us speed our time to market. We still wanted that kind of mixture of experience, but we wanted to get to the market as quickly as possible to get as much data to our clients to help drive what, what they were doing on Amazon. And so let me show you kind of how that strategy has played out and what it looks like uh, currently in our product. So what you're looking at now is market share, as I mentioned. And what we've done is we've really kind of split it into three major groups. The first group is looking at my business. So when you're looking at Amazon, you want to understand what you are doing. Ultimately, that's what you can control, right? It's really kind of critical, and we'll talk more about that, about understanding what your competitors are doing. But when it comes down to it, those are data points. You can't necessarily influence what they're doing, but you can control what you're doing. So we wanted to be able to break that out. Market view is really the, the competition, what's happening in your category. Uh, so you can go ahead and track not only how you're doing, but all of your competitors are doing. And then there's the scorecard piece, or you can think of the digital shelf piece. And that's where all of the factors that are kind of uh, driving your sales, and, and whether that's pricing or traffic or promotions or whatever they may be, 
that those are really kind of the sales drivers. So as you start looking at some of these uh, reports uh, based off of what I'm showing you here, that they're always driven by uh, by filters, right? We want to be able to allow you to drill down and, uh, you know, slice and dice the data how you see fit. And that was another critical thing in working with uh, the bytecode team of being able for us to manage our own filter system and then pushing those parameters over to a uh, bytecode slash looker to be able to generate reports. And so as I start looking at these filters, you can see that we can have some safe filters that I can look at. But as I go through this creating a custom filter and I start selecting this, and you're looking at a hierarchy here, then it's really complex. And we didn't want to necessarily recreate that in Looker, that we wanted to own that experience. We understood our clients' catalogs and wanted to provide that. So they've been really great to work with that as I start looking through here, I can start picking what categories or subcategories that I want to either include or exclude in my filters. Similarly, along with the calendar that I can go ahead and look at the calendar. And again, as I start going through and picking time periods that are of interest to me, we pass this data on and you can look at the data, whether it's our reports or the looker reports, uh, driven by our filter. So that was one of the key things uh, in working uh, with the Looker team. So as I start looking at my data, we wanted to provide some different views. And as you think about Amazon, it's really kind of driven down into 1P, which is, are your own sales. And the other kind of major one is 3P, which are third-party sellers that are also selling your products for whatever reason, uh, either intended or not intended. And so we want to be able to track that. And we show you an accrued value, or you can also break it down on a weekly uh, value. As you're looking at your data, what's really critical from a data perspective that we want to be able to provide our, our uh, clients is context. That all of these data points are really interesting that it, you, know, you did 694,000 in this whatever week it was, but we wanted to show you week over week and year over year, and that provides context. Are you growing or are you shrinking? And we wanted to be able to provide that as you go through and quickly look at every week that you can see those differences uh, based off of that. We also show you headline figures. And again, as you start thinking about this, as we thought about different personas, being able to roll up some data that if you have five seconds to talk to your boss or to talk to an analyst or maybe an investor, here's what's happening with your Amazon business to where you have all of that most critical data right at your fingertips. We also wanted to be able to show you brands and you can look at each one of these brands. You can see the sales week over week, year over year. So part of our data, remember that one is help me understand what happened. The other part is the why. And that's where this comes in. So at an ASIN level or at a product level, what we do is we show you the differences or the top movers or top performers. So you're looking at top movers, meaning which ASINs change the most from one week to a next week or from one time period to the next time period. And we show you that change or I can quickly move to top performers. Which of my products are really kind of driving my revenue? So you can see that everywhere here. The next report, and again, these are uh, created uh, by, by my team, uh, the market share team, because we wanted to really customize that experience. As I look at here, I can now look at my uh, sales drivers. And this is an interesting report that as I look at sales, conversion, and traffic, and then ultimately what impact that it has on share. So as you start looking at these and we've stacked them, because if you can imagine that you, let's say you spend a, a marketing campaign, you buy a marketing campaign on Amazon. What you want to look at is, did my traffic go up, but also what happened to my conversion rate and to my sales? Meaning that if I see a traffic spike, but my conversion dips at the same point, it means that, sure, I got a lot more people uh, to my product page, but they didn't buy so that may mean that who I targeted, the people that I targeted for my marketing campaign, weren't the right people. 
And ultimately, because my conversion, my sales didn't increase. So, you know, it, it wasn't a good ROI on my marketing spend. So it's those kind of insights that as you look at that data all together that we want to be able to provide our clients. And again, as you start looking here, you can look at conversion and traffic uh, movers and performers to understand really what products, individual products are driving your, your business. So the next one is market view. So remember, my business was your own data, understanding what's happening here. What we show you in market view is not only your own uh, data, but in context to your competitors, whether they're your, your competitor uh, brands like a Coke and a Pepsi, or maybe, or sorry, at manufacturers, or maybe they are uh, competitor brands. Maybe it's Diet Coke versus, uh, you know, a Diet Dr. Pepper. So you can look at, again, the sales week over week, year over year, as I start looking at what that category looks like. And again, as we start showing you all of this information, you can see how am I growing in comparison to others within my category? And I can look at this and I can even start drilling down. So let's say I see a spike here. I can start looking at some of these and drill down. And remember that if I start looking at, uh, so now I'm looking at week 34. I'm looking at Blue Box. Let's say that's a competitor of mine. And now I can start looking at the ASINs that are driving that competitor's um, sales for that particular week here. So it's that granularity. Again, remember, high level, drill down, drill down. And you'll see that here when I jump to scorecard, how uh, Looker fits in into uh, that, that same scenario. So I'm looking here, and I can drill down to see that data. I can also look at share. So this is kind of really critical of am I growing in or how am I growing in comparison to others, right? So it kind of stabilizes that. Let's say I, you know, I'm a $10 million company and I have a, a competitor who maybe is only a million dollars that maybe they're not even on my radar because I sell so much more. My sales are 10x. But if I start looking at the share and my growth of share, that's what's really critical. Am I keeping that same distance between myself and that up and comer? Am I keeping the same market share? And you can see, again, that same information. So this is market view. Now, I talked about we want to be able to kind of show you what happened. And, and you see through my business and, uh, and uh, market view of what happened. Now, now uh, these reports are 100% driven by Looker uh, and, and uh, created by the Bytecode team. And so here's where you can start seeing and drilling down a little bit more into what's happening around traffic and conversion and promotions, ratings and review, pricing and availability. So the Looker team has helped us build all of these reports with that data that we pulled directly from Amazon or that we crawl on the sites uh, through our, our data platform. And remember at the very beginning that I said one of the key things for us is that we wanted uh, to be able to manage the, the data filters for us. So as you go through here and as you start looking, if you remember that I kind of showed you what those look like here, that again, we are in control of this uh, experience. And so what happens is we go ahead and allow our users who have created or saved filters that as they go ahead and look at this data, we pass it through Looker. And then we've iframed these reports into our platform. And we've been so happy with working with these guys because in, of what might have taken our team a couple months, maybe six, eight weeks to build, that we can go and outsource that through a blended model, and, and maybe it only takes the Bytecode team two weeks to build. So we're able to iterate and get more and more reports out more quickly for our clients to go ahead and, and help them understand their business. So let me spend just a little bit of time on uh, some of these reports so you kind of get an idea of, of the, the data that we have, um, but maybe more importantly, how we're surfing is, surfacing it for actionable I insights because ultimately that's where we want to go a data point is interesting oh man that that's a bummer my sales went down but help me understand the why and help me understand what i need to go do to fix it so as i start looking at traffic 
This is one of our uh, most popular reports. So top traffic with lowest conversion for my items. So what that means is, and it's similar to the example I gave you, that I have a bunch of people coming to uh, my, my page. The problem is that they're not buying. And there may be a lot of reasons why they're bu not buying. It could be that you have a bad image, poor reviews uh, based off of that. Maybe your description is wrong. Maybe it's a pricing problem. But we want to be able to surface that, that let's say you have – uh, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 items that you're selling on Amazon that you don't have time to go through all of those to understand where your problems are. We want to be able to surface those uh, to you through our data and through our visualization, right? Because our users are really busy, that they have a lot of products to manage and they want, and they have very little time. They want us to help them go here to fix again, whatever the problem is. So this is kind of one of our uh, very popular reports. And then what you'll see is they also want change, right? That if something status quo, don't, don't tell me about it, you know, because it's working for me. What I want to understand is if things are going up or down and, and that's what you need to tell me. And, and tell me the negative if things went down just as much as tell me the positive, that if I see a spike in, in a product, I want to know why. Maybe I can replicate it to sell more, or whatever the case may be. So you'll see a lot of top movers, top performers through these uh, reports as well. So we do traffic. Conversion looks very similar uh, to that, um, as well as we look at your top conversion with lowest traffic. Now, this is kind of the inverse that I just talked about. So these are products that have really high conversion rates, meaning that if I can get more people there, they're gonna buy. What a direct source to increased sales or revenue based off of that. My problem is I can't get people to my to that, that page. So maybe it's a problem around search or uh, you know placement or whatever the case may be. Maybe I need to run a marketing campaign. I need to get people to those pages because once they're there, they buy. Uh, we we manage uh, promotions uh, based off of that, so we are able to track the promotions that you're running along with what promotions your competitors are running. So as we've worked with uh, Looker and Bytecode based off of this, they've helped us design these kind of reports that not only uh, data about our competitors as well, so you can not only see how you're trending, but also what your competitors are doing. So as you look at, for example, you know, uh, percent of sales on promotion, so are you, uh, you know, promoting as much of your competitors? Are there opportunities there from a promotion standpoint? Next one, ratings and reviews. I always find this one really interesting. Uh, you know, I'm sure we've all reviewed products and I, I can look at these and I can uh, understand, you know, with the reviews coming in, how am I getting from a rating standpoint compared to my competitors based off of that? And again, what we call out are like worst rated items in my um, in, in my uh, list of uh, products. Products that have less than 25 reviews. And maybe most of you have heard that Amazon did a study that any item that has less than 20, 25 reviews, it really impacts your conversion rate. Meaning that if you go to that and there's only, let's say, you know, 15, 12 reviews, you may not trust buying it. There's just not enough feedback there. Not, not enough people have kind of given you that confidence so your conversion rate is impacted. So we want to be able to call those out. And, and again, the movers. So I've said uh, now a few times that as we think about our personas, that we want to be able to provide a high level, but then drill down. So this is a great example when I was working with the Byteco team of what our clients want is this is really important, but I want to see at an ASIN level or at a review level, help me understand the text that the, that the reviewer actually provided. So I can click here. I can drill down. And again, this is Looker that I can look at for that time period, for that week, every single review that came in. And I can see exactly what they said. And when they submitted it and different 
uh, pieces of information. So what we're doing on market share, this is one of many to come where we up level that. And then if you have a, a, a more detailed question, you want more granularity, click um, and then the, through 100 percent through Looker, you can drill down and, and look at that data. So we're really excited about that. Uh, our, our user and client feedback has been super positive uh, around that drill down uh, capability. The last one is around availability, meaning is your product in, in stock or not, or can I access your product? Um, so this is out of stock, really important that, you know, you can't make sales if your product is not uh, in stock. And we wanna be able to help you uh, understand which products are out of stock and what your trending out of stock is um, on the Amazon uh, catalog. So one last thing I, I want to show you uh, that we've worked very closely with the Bytecode and, and Looker team is exporting data, right? That we work with a lot of, a lot of large enterprises and, and not all of them, you know, want an app. They have a bunch of different data sources. They have their own uh, data teams. They mix data, our data with other data, whatever. And we want to make it really simple for them to export that data. So as I go ahead and get data here, that I can either through a CSV or an API, and again, a bytecode 100% kind of manages this and all the calls go through a looker into our data lake, that I can go through and I can customize the data that I want to export. And so I can go through here and I can select the time period that I want, maybe it's this year, uh, I can select the interval, um, if I want a, a certain filter, um, and then I can view by, maybe I want to view by at the ASIN level. And then you can see here are uh, the metrics that we make available to our clients. So maybe I want to look at it by ASIN sales, uh, you know, the week that it sold at. Now I want to look at ordered sales and units and orders and I want page views and maybe a review count and returns. So at this point, I'm ready to download and I get a CSV of that data. And again, the ability to export that data for you to manage it and do whatever you want with it is really kind of critical to our experience. It's critical from a Looker standpoint. I didn't show you here, but one of the things that our clients love about Looker is, is that in a UI, we need to kind of show you a top list, whether it's 10, 15, 20, that's all we want to be able to show you in a UI. So it's really great and critical for our users and our clients to be able to export that data. And so uh, here's how we are able uh, to do that uh, through, through, uh, through Looker. So that's it for, for market share. Again, uh, just to reiterate, you know, if you happen to sell products on, on Amazon, one of the key things uh, that you need to be aware of, of not only your own sales, right? Everyone has access to their own sales, but don't look at your sales in a, you know, your sales in a vacuum. You need to understand what's happening in your category or across your competitors. And that's where market share comes in. So you can understand what you can do to not only keep growing your sales, but maybe more importantly, growing within that category. Or maybe you want to expand into a new category and you want to understand who are the players there. So there's a lot of different things that that we at Edge can help you uh, manage. And again, one last shout out that, uh, again, as we chose Looker and, and Bytecode kind of as our integrator there, the time to market of what you've seen here, we've done in three months with a relatively small team here in Salt Lake. So as I look at it, I've worked with a lot of other really large clients. This probably would have been a, at least a year's worth of effort uh, to get this kind of data, these kind of reports and granularity out to users. We shrunk it to three months and, and we're so happy with, uh, you know, kind of uh, the, the relationship that we have with Bytecode, the Looker technology and how it's helped us get to market much more quickly. And with that, I'll uh, turn it back uh, to John. So as, as that pulls up, I mean, what, what we 
I thought I'd provide a little bit of context in terms of by code of, of who we are and what we do, and then talk about our, our, our partnership with Scott and his team and, and the liquor team to deliver this product to market. And I, the big thing here is that we're, we're a system integrator, so we're a full stack data engineering team and really approach these problems from a holistic perspective. So on our team, we have solution architecture. How do you set up the right back end with the right front end technologies to make these types of, of products happen? And then we've got the full backend team to do data integration, data acquisition, data warehousing, and a lot of a lot of work goes into use cases like these where you know you're delivering data and insights to customers. Performance is critical, and so it's not just about acquiring your data and pushing that into a warehouse. It's really about you know how do you structure that data for the analytical workload so that you can deliver those insights performantly. And, and we work with a lot of teams to do that, and then. We're a strategic partner of Lookers and have been for the last five years and, and really pride ourselves on, on not just Looker implementation to do the complex things that we need to do for, for these types of products from the business logic to the modeling to the drill downs to the experience, but also augmenting that with people who are experts on the platform. So this is, is taking Looker and embedding it with your, in your own application. And then as, as Scott showed on the, the download feature and the, and the filters feature, it's really about creating these integrated experiences. How do you make it seamless for the for your customer when you take a product like Looker and embed it within your application so you can accelerate time to value and deliver capability, but also deliver that, that, that seamless experience? So when we when we think about building these products and partnering with, with with folks like Scott, it's really about how do you how do you bring the right expertise to holistically solve the problem? And so, you know, drilling into specifically what we're doing here, you know, we we're responsible for, for the, the Looker implementation. So this is taking the platform and the LookML or the actual abstraction layer of the business logic that generates the SQL, um, implementing all that so that we can deliver those, those reports and those insights that are within the product. And then as you think about how you take Looker and, and make it your own, you know, there's an embedding capability. So this is taking uh, an iframe or, or taking a look at platform and embedding that within your application. And the big piece here is um, is, is really about handling the authentication and integration from the security perspective. Of how do you how do you pass through when a lot when a user logs into your application? How do you pass through the necessary things to Looker? So you can do things like row level security, content permissioning, and leverage all of the all the capabilities out of the box. And then lastly, there's there's the embed plus API. So this is really about um, how how not you just don't embed a dashboard, but how you build features off of the API. And I'll, I'll get into this more detail, but this is more of that integration piece. So this is how you can have filters in your top level application that interact seamlessly both with custom visualizations that are that are developed by your team and the iframe itself. Or we can do things like building a, a ad hoc download tool that allows the user to you know, select the type of data they want, call into Looker, leverage that whole uh, semantic layer, that LookML layer, to generate the query to return the data so that it's always correct. What you're displaying in a custom visualization or you're displaying within Looker or you're returning as a data download all of that is, is managed and configured within the LookML layer, but allows you the flexibility to deliver the experience that, that you want for your end users. So where we, where we come in and our goals are is, you know, we really want to accelerate delivery to market. You know, by leveraging the products and platforms like Looker and Snowflake, it can vastly reduce the time, as Scott was mentioning, from things that used to take a year to build and develop down into a matter of months. And then we want to partner with the team. Like you have a lot of options here in terms of what you can do with Looker out of the box versus what you can do with an embed versus what you can build from the API. And our goal is to really work with, with you and with Scott to, to say, here are your options. Great. Like we want to deliver this type of capability. Here's what it looks like across the spectrum. So you're right sizing the solution uh, and getting the value that you want. And then last is, you know, we've been there and done this. We've, we've done over 175. Uh, deployments, and we want to bring that that knowledge and that experience to the table, uh, so you know the gotchas in advance, so that we're making the right investment, so that we're building the the, the integrations on the API in a way that that's going to be performant and make the most sense, both for today as well as for the future. And that translates into kind of a methodology or a vision here, which is really like 
we want to partner with with Scott and, and with customers to really understand what is their product vision, what are they trying to accomplish, and then help them understand, you know, how do we get as much of this with out of the box as possible, leveraging the investment you have in, in Looker as a platform. You know, there's a lot of advanced things and, and tricks that you can do to achieve novel experiences, and we want to we show what those options are. And then you can take that experience, you can embed it within you know, your own application, and then really understanding, you know, what are those unique value add experiences that you need to deliver that you want a little bit more flexibility in terms of, of how that looks and feels to your customers. Well, this isn't an and or decision, it's more of a, a capability. And so then while still leveraging all of your investment in the modeling layer to encapsulate that business logic, you can then have more control over the front end, whether that's a straight embed or building interactivity via the SDK or building custom visualizations on the API the nice part about the platform is it gives you the flexibility to do all these things, but from a from a product fit perspective, we're really trying to maximize that investment in the platform because it gets you to market faster and it allows you to uh, leverage more of the features out of the box. So, kind of taking this to two examples, you know, Scott was mentioning the the global filtering working seamlessly both in the in the visualizations that are powered by. The, the development team or custom visualizations, as well as the same filters are equally applied to to the LookML dashboards or the Looker dashboard, that is, that's handled really just through the embed. So those are set in the application, uh, they're passed through uh, to Looker, and then we map that into the LookML or the modeling language that eventually makes its way all the way into the query that's being generated. And so while that can be a, a seamless experience to the user, from an implementation perspective, it's actually relatively straightforward to take the, the, that, that, that top-level filter and apply it equally to all assets within the application. And the key benefit here is that with the, the embedded dashboard, you're getting all the user management, and you're getting the row-level security, and you're getting caching, and all the other features that you would expect from, from a, a modern BI solution. You're getting all of that out of the box. And then when we need these, these more custom experiences, if you will, where it's, it's very nuanced to the data and how they want to interact with it for this download tool. There's specific ways that you think about hierarchy. There's specific ways that you think about wanting to filter that data. Well, then you can build that, that UI or that wizard, however, that makes most sense for your users, and then leverage the API to actually call into a specific explorer, which is just a way of, of, of structuring the data, to have that pull back the uh, looker, packaged up in a file, and then deliver to the end user. And so you've got the flexibility here of doing these, these integrated experiences via embed or even building your own custom pieces uh, with the API. And so as we think about this, you know, it's, it's, it's a holistic solution from the back-end technology to the platform to the front-end application, and then it's really about right-sizing. You know, how do we get the most value out of the investment? How do we identify those opportunities that are truly unique and differentiated? And then how do we leverage the flexibility in the platform to deliver them? And, and that's really kind of how we think about accelerating time to value, accelerating time to market, and building really products that are going to be extensible for, for now and for the future. And with that, um, I will hand it to Lucas to kind of talk about a little bit more from a liquor perspective, how they see you know, the market and how they, they partner with uh, ourselves and customers uh, to deliver success. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, it's just fantastic to hear, you know, how customers use Looker and, and how partners really help those customers. So it's it's fantastic to hear those stories. So, um, yeah, I'm Lucas Tidosen. I run the services arm of, of Looker for the Americas. And you you may have heard of Looker already. We, we recently went through the uh, a Google acquisition, so we're now part of Google. We are... And what most people probably think of is a analytics tool, a BI tool. And I think it's very important and a big part of this presentation here today with, with, uh, with everybody on is that it, you can do so much more once you have your data organized and easily accessible. So let me jump into a little overview of, of Looker here and uh, just see how the animation works. Oh, there we go. It's all popping in. So Looker sits on top of your database, right? whichever databases might be, we're multi-cloud, so it can be Snowflake, it can be Redshift, and of course we work very well with BigQuery as well, or a lot of other databases for that matter. 
And then just to take a step back here, Looker, Looker then provides that in database real time experience and a semantic modeling layer on top. And that means all your data is explained and, and organized, you know, with the definition of revenue, the definition of what a new customer is. You define it one time in that data modeling layer, and then it can be used anywhere. And so, of course, the initial first use case is what you see here in, in that green column is internal analytics. Right? That's the first thing people think of, and that's that's a common misconception of, of what Looker is. Well, not misconception. It's true. We, we can do internal analytics, no problem. You can get a dashboard. You can drill into reports. We have all that. But then where the true power of that semantic modeling layer comes in is when you talk about what else can you use data for. And I really appreciate the example we just we just saw here. You can use data in so many different ways. And more and more customers now talk to us about data monetization, for example. Like, how can we actually make this you know, a top feature for our top customers, our vendors, maybe integrate this into our portal? Um, we, we have been working with, um, I think, almost all of the, a lot of the top fortune companies now to integrate Looker into their various work streams. So data can be used for fraud detection, right? Data can be used to determine which uh, of your customers needs to be notified to, to get their flu shots if you're in the healthcare space. There are so many ways you can use data. You can integrate it into your workflow. You can uh, build applications like we have seen here where you're really servicing your customers um, a fantastic experience, real time, very actionable, drillable, and you can actually look deeper into the data. So there's so much you can do, and uh, it's it's great in this panel here that we're exploring these and take a closer look at all the different ways data can be used now. I think too many companies stop at the internal business use case. Um, I've I've seen it now so many times where once you go and think beyond that of what is actually our our ROI on investing in this data stack, it becomes a fantastic experience for the company. And um, it just makes so much sense to not only use it internally, but also in many external customer facing, vendor facing, uh, you know, maybe even some of our customers are so large that they think of their other departments as customers to them and make that a, a very good data experience. Uh, we have one particularly large customer that um, operates uh, thousands of stores and they need to be able to have a very um, pleasant experience, so to speak, for their store managers so they can navigate quickly through what needs to happen in their store, what kind of staffing, what kind of supply chain. And, and you can build all that very easily and quickly on Looker with all the governance layers in between so you're secure on the definition of data, so you can make sure it's always correct, but also on the security of uh, the access uh, to data. So then... I don't know. I want to leave some time here for questions at the end. So as we then, from the services side, think about engaging with a with a new prospect, a new customer, you know, Bytecode, of course, is one of our uh, our best partners there in crime. But we don't just talk about the tech part, which has been been a lot of what this um, conversation has been about so far. But we also talk about the business outcomes, what do you want to achieve? What should it be like? What should be the experience like? And then the data culture, the um, what, how can we make your company data literate? But how can we make sure that everybody that you're trying to reach actually understands how to use data and make it applicable to their day-to-day -day life? But the, just because you put a dashboard in front of someone doesn't mean they know how to use that data and apply it to their day-to-day -day job. You may have to walk them through it. And so we set up educational programs. We teach customers how to teach their um, internal customers or external facing customers. So it's a more holistic approach than just setting up Looker. Right? The, the Looker in itself is not all that complex, but right? we want to make it as easy as possible. But getting true value out of your data, I think that's, that requires another step. And we want to be there to support you and our, our customers to really get the most out of their out of their investment in data. Okay, I want to keep it very short, so I'm going to close it with that and leave some time for questions. Great. Thanks so much, Lucas. And thank you as well, Scott and John. I really appreciate you leading this presentation. Uh, we have a couple of questions that have come through. And just a reminder, you can use the Q&A widget and send us your questions now. Um, the first question that came through is uh, probably for Scott. Scott, how did you approach the design of Market Share 2.0 to deliver insights and not just data to customers? 
Yeah. So um, as I mentioned, the, the real kind of driver was we wanted to expand the persona. And, uh, you know, we were talking about internal when you when you start thinking about BI tools and you think analysts, uh, that it's very data centric and very kind of data heavy and a bunch of numbers on the page and, and all of that. So that's what we had come from. And, and what we wanted to do was we really wanted to target more users, right, to where an executive who maybe you know, wasn't in the tool every day or didn't completely understand the, the data could still get value out of it and could understand their business to help drive kind of decisions at those levels. And so from a design standpoint, as we started looking at the data, again, our first one was, what would that look like if we wanted to go all the way from an executive down to an analyst? And what kind of experiences would each one of those personas expect. And the outcome of that really kind of turned out to be they needed to be able to drill down, right? And I showed you, you know, a lot of different kind of places where we've implemented that, where we have rolled up data. And then if you want to find out more and more and more, that's where you go ahead and click and, and drill down. And so that's kind of what drove our overall design and our partnership with Looker. Great, thanks. And another one, uh, possibly, I guess for you, Scott, as well, is how often are you able to deliver new capabilities to your customers? And has time to deliver been accelerated with the new tech stack? Oh, certainly. Um, so, so we deliver every two weeks. Uh, you know, we we uh, use Agile, uh, like many software companies do, uh, where our sprints uh, are every two weeks, and so. Every two weeks as we go through, uh, we release new uh, new code, uh, which can be new features, new functionality to clients. Maybe it's back end, um, whatever the case may be. As part of those feature releases, sometimes uh, it's a mixture of not only what we're doing internally through our team, but oftentimes it also includes work that the Bytecode team has done as well. So it might be those new reports under scorecard tab that we added or new metrics or whatever the case may be. Uh, but we do release every two weeks consistently uh, based off of that. And as I mentioned at the very end, when you looked at our product and we kind of estimated what it would be, uh, how long it would take, we were over a year uh, to get everything that we needed uh, to, to uh, provide to our clients. And that year, as we started engaging with uh, Looker and Bytecode, shrunk down to we did it all in about four four months' time. And so it, it really kind of just made everything faster to get to market, which was critical for us. And, and if I can take back on that, you know, we, we see this with a, a lot of customers that we work with, and I think there, there's two components of it. One is the initial time to market, which can be huge, like as Scott was saying, like cutting down from a year of development into a matter of months. But then the second component of this, and this goes to you know the slide I was showing on on how much do you fit into the box versus how much do you do custom, and why we have a methodology and, and a, an approach of to make it fit in the box is for the the ongoing incremental, you know, being able to release a new dashboard or being able to like make changes based off of customer feedback, you know, once it's implemented and it's there, you're out of the world of engineering and you're into the world of you know technical product managers being able to go in and you know. Let's say that the bar chart is, is not it's not resonating with how people want to want to use that, and if we change it into a different chart type, or if we added an additional data element into it, or if we added trend lines or showed them what it was going to look like going forward, you know, all of that is configuration out of the box with Looker, and that allows you to deliver incremental value, not just the initial value of the product, cutting that down from year to month, but every two weeks being able to deliver even more value and capability to your customers, and, and that's just that seems to be hugely powerful. Wonderful. And I think we have time for maybe one more. Um, I'm not exactly sure who this is directed at, but uh, maybe Scott can touch on it from the edge side and maybe Lucas from the looker side. Um, but someone asks, how do you balance the flexibility for complex analysis while keeping the product intuitive? Yeah, so I, I, I'm happy to jump that. That was the exact problem that, you know, we wanted to solve. Right. And, and, you know, in my previous answer, it was 
it was that, that the intuitive part, as we thought about that, that came from people who didn't live in the tool day to day, who might come once a month or at the end of a quarter, or people who have a more broad view of the entire market, not just kind of where you live day to day. And and that's where uh, we started looking at how can we address uh, or show data and make it intuitive for executives. And then again, the drill down capability of, of helping me not only stand, understand what happened, but the why and the how to fix it. That's where we kind of, the drill down helps address those types of questions uh, based off of that. So that's how we address uh, both sides of that coin, so to speak. Yeah, and this is Lucas. Uh, so from my end, you know, I always recommend to customers to start off with less in the beginning and then add to it afterwards, right? It's so you have so many measures and dimensions and whatnot available for people. I think the most useful one, even if you want to drill down, is keep it simple and understandable because the last thing you want to do is confuse anyone. But you can always quickly and easily add things, add dimensions and measures and whatnot. But I think making it overly complicated in the beginning can really hurt you. Wonderful. Well, I appreciate it, guys. I think that really takes us right to the out. Looks like we're right on time. Um, so I want to thank uh, John and Scott and Lucas for delivering a great presentation. And thank you to everyone who joined today's webinar.